Well, good afternoon and thank you for uh, coming here this afternoon. About 10 years ago, we began to dream and to imagine a new future for UI healthcare. We implemented our integrated strategic plan in a series of thoughtfully uh, executed strategy that have led to the construction of the ambulatory care clinic uh, at Iowa River Landing, the conceptualization and uh, really achievement of the Papa John Biomedical Discovery Building, the recruitment and retention of world-class researcher, the implementation of a new medical school curriculum, and the construction of a new children's hospital. And these are just a few of our major accomplishments. Our success has been a matter of strategy, prudent investment, great leadership by Ken Cates, Deb Schwinn, Doug Vendale, and many, many others, as well as attention to details. And all of us together, we have worked hard to create an integrated academic medical center that we express as one vision, one future. Today, as a result of these changes, we are a stronger, more agile organization. We are now more nimble and flexible than we have ever been when responding to opportunity. We also value transparency, teamwork, accountability, and patient-centeredness. In addition, we have a well-established collaborative decision-making process in which the college, the UI physician, and the hospital contribute and participate equally. We understand also that our clinical and academic mission are fully intertwined and rely on the strength of our basic and clinical research program for their success. We are also achieving a sustainable financial model that supports our three missions of patient care, education, and research. We have accomplished much, and much is still coming, including the development of the Iowa River Landing II and the construction of the Orthopedic Institute in the very near future. We must build on this momentum and create our next step in the transformation of UI health care. Now, now let's imagine our future. Where do we want to be as UI healthcare? And some people will say, well, uh, let's not worry too much about the future. It's unpredictable and we cannot control it. Maybe we should talk more about the present. But one thing is clear about the future. It may be, it may be we cannot predict it, but it's unavoidable. It will happen. And therefore, we need to start to think about what kind of future we will like for ourselves and to pass on to the next generation. And so let's imagine that we cannot only cure some of medicine's most complex problem, but that everyone will receive personalized, coordinated healthcare where and when they need it. Let's also imagine that the decision we will make today will decrease the cost of medical education, will boost clinical and basic research, will create new enterprise, will develop new jobs, and will improve the health and life of people in the country. And some of you will say, wow, this is not feasible. But there is no more unrealistic than thinking a few years ago that we can be the best healthcare employer in the country. We've done it. We also are believing our nurse could be awarded the 2014 Magnet Prize the only such prize to a medical center in the country last year. We also done that. It's also not more unrealistic than raising more than $90 million in philanthropy for UI healthcare during the last 12 months, and over $600 million during our present for Iowa Forevermore fundraising campaign. We've done that too. And this is also not more unrealistic than our faculty making great discovery that promised to change the way we practice medicine. <laughs> No, none of this is unrealistic. We have achieved all of these things and much more. But how are we to lead the way and create the future we want to have for our organization, our patient, our student, and ourselves? And how are we to do this? Well, one way to do this is to position ourselves so we can reach beyond the traditional ways of learning, teaching, conducting research, and caring for patients. 
It's all about positioning ourselves clinically, academically, and scientifically so we can continue to lead the transformation of medicine and make a real difference in the lives of people here in Iowa and around the world. As one previously said, strategy is the path that we will get us there, but using imagination and creativity will define our goals and aspirations. Now, let's talk first about our clinical enterprise and ask a few questions. Then we will talk about our research enterprise and our education after that. First, regarding the clinical enterprise, knowing that healthcare is in a rapid phase of transformation, where are we in this transformation process? What opportunities and challenges do we face? And how are we leading the way and creating the future we want to have for our organization, our patient, our student and ourselves. First, I think all of you realize that healthcare in Iowa is still very much in the process of rapidly evolving change. While the primary focus of the transformation has been on reimbursement and insurance, many other changes have been taking place. There has been a great consolidation among providers, both among hospitals as well as physician groups. Within Iowa, presently, there are essentially now three large networks, each composed of large tertiary care facility, along with critical care access hospital, clinic, and physician. These three networks, one of which is the University of Iowa Healthcare, compete for cover life. It means that we must deliver not only great care, but we must enhance quality and outcome while reducing our costs. <coughs> And to achieve this goal, we are making real transformation efforts to improve access to both routine as well as specialty care. One example has been the development of our e-health innovation center, which launched telehealth robots four years ago as part of our effort to improve stroke care in other communities. More recently, we have also launched UI eCare, a virtual visit available for routine and urgent medical problem for adults and children. Over the next few months, this program, one of the first of its kind in Iowa, will expand statewide and will not only improve access, but improve patient satisfaction due to increased convenience and lower costs. These efforts to improve access have been developed with the full participation of UIP and the great work of our outstanding nursing staff. Now we have same-day access available for many specialty appointments and expanded service site for pediatric primary care specialty <coughs> service along with the new quick care locations. One other approach is to increase the quality of our care, uh, to uh, increase the quality of our care is to increase patient safety. Both our nursing staff and physician are working together to eliminate never event and hospital acquire infection and to improve our performance on call measure. Again, these and many other efforts to improve patient safety are part of a large scale teamwork or hallmark of our organization. Another important approach is also to transform our organization is, to inc is the increasing use of da data for clinical decision making. We are now beginning to take the data available through EPIC and use it to understand how we can improve quality, safety, and outcome while monitoring the total cost of care. Furthermore, the integration of big data with biomedical research is also yielding other tangible benefit for patients. For example, the whole, uh, the whole exome sequencing work in the research lab is making diagnos diagnosis of challenging medical problem not possible. Our investment in genetic, precision oncology, and other similar efforts are very much aligned with NIH priority and are already showing great promise and as a testimonial to our outstanding success in data integration and improved patient outcome, we were recognized this year with the National Nicholas Davies Award of Excellence, really a testimony to the outstanding work of uh, the UI Healthcare Information Service team. All that, all what I just mentioned will not have been possible 
without the eye quality of our people. And regardless of role, our staff is individually and collectively seeking to deliver excellence every time. And this is reflected in the testimony we receive from our patients who express their heartfelt expression of gratitude, not only for the care they received, but for the unexpected personal touch, such as personal escort to an appointment or often locating a lost car in the parking ramp. It should be also very clear that we value our people, their achievement and teamwork. One core aspect of strength through people <coughs> is our emphasis on inclusion and welcoming diversity. And for the second year in a row, the Healthcare Equality Index, as named University of Iowa Hospital and Clinic, an equality leader in its national survey based on non-discrimination policy. And finally, this will not have been possible without philanthropy and a strong financial performance by our clinical enterprise. Numerous philanthropic efforts have played a major role in our success. And by the close of this calendar year, more than 90,000 individual donors, including many of you here, will have contributed for the For Iowa Forevermore campaign making gift to UI Healthcare totaling more than $635 million and bringing us closer to our goal of $700 million, which will be surpassed without a doubt since the campaign will continue until December 2016. Such private gifts are often the make or break difference in our ability to advance our priority. In addition to our success in philanthropy, our hospital under the leadership of Ken Cates has experienced an exceptional year. While many other academic medical centers have been forced to dramatically reduce their costs in the past year to offset operating losses, our focus on growth and development strategy and our rigorous cost management has helped us to maintain financial health. This history of positive financial trends means that we are now well positioned to make careful, thoughtful investment in our people, facility, technology, and mission of research and education, so we can move our vision forward more rapidly. Nowhere is the result of this investment so apparent in the new UI Children's Hospital that is little more than one year away from completion. This spectacular new structure, which is part of a larger master plan designed to make all our patient room private, will house our inpatient pediatric service, including specialty, specially designed family area, imaging surgical suite, and all private room. On 14th floor, which is now officially, according to Ken Cates, the, uh, Ayos, Iowa, City, the, uh, the Iowa City tallest building plane can still go over it. <laughs> However, as wonderful as it will be, the new Children's Hospital will be more than just a building. It is intended to be a home for Iowa children. And the goal of the new Children's Hospital is not just to provide excellent comprehensive care for children, but also to become a health and wellness hub for children and family across Iowa. Now let's uh, move to research and let's talk about the research transformation. Our ability to innovate, to discover, and to create new knowledge is at the core of what we are. And innovation and discovery develop new enterprise, create new jobs, and improve the life of everyone. Really, innovation and discovery are the foundation of our economy. In every way we look at it, research is essential to our future. It is our key differentiator. And we owe it to ourselves to not only maintain, but to enhance this research difference. But first, we have to understand the challenge we face. There's no question that over the last five, seven years, uh, we have seen a steady decline in federal research funding, including a reduction in, I, in NIH current and constant dollar of approximately 25% since 2003. 
And this is in addition to a fiscal constraint of sequestration that we all felt. As one person said, the recent years have been terrible if you had great idea. There was no money behind. But this is about to change. There may be some light at the end of this tunnel. Congress is considering legislation known as the 21st Century Cure that will give the NIH an additional 10 billion from 2016 to 2020, or an extra two billion a year for the next five years. However, despite these encouraging news, the pressure on academic medical center to support more and more of the research enterprise continue to increase. A study done two years ago by the Association of Academic Health Center showed that medical school fund between 19% and 49% of total research expenditure with internal institutional fund. In other words, medical school, after they get a grant, have to have between 19 cents and 49 cents for every dollar they get. That's a study done two years ago. Another study done recently by the WMC uh, determined that this cost is even higher than that. It's over 50 cents for each dollar. Now here, the Carver College of Medicine spent about 50 cents for every dollar of funded research, or the equivalent of 70 million per year to subsidize our research enterprise. These internal costs are in addition to indirect cost dollar contributed by the NIH or other external funding agency. All that said is our research enterprise need to be subsidized, it's not self-supporting, and this is something we have to live with and we have to accept if we want to be successful. Then our future success in, in research depends on substantial institutional commitment, on an aggressive philanthropic agenda, and on our ability to increase dramatically our federal funding, funding especially our NIH grants. Therefore, if we want to differentiate ourselves from our competitors, grow our research enterprise, and continue to lead as one of the top academic health centers in this country, we need new strategy, new approaches, new structure, new resources, and new relationship, both organizationally and academically. In a way, we need really to reinvent ourselves. So how do we do this? There are four key steps for us to solve this. First, and as I just said, we need to emphasize and to facilitate interdisciplinary collaboration. If we are to maintain and strengthen our research and creative excellence, we must facilitate institutional partnering, multidisciplinary scholarship, and collaboration across departments and colleges. Team-based science does not accelerate discovery and in, uh, does accelerate discovery, and in fact will increasingly be the bellwether of advances. For example, the creation of our CTSA 10 years ago, the development of the Papa John Institute for Biomedical Discovery, the development of the Fraternal Order of Eagle Diabetes Center, the Wynn Institute for Vision Research, the Abud Cardiovascular Research Center, and the University Cluster Higher Initiative are a few examples of how we have begun to refocus the way we are performing research. We must keep pushing for the changes that will make interdisciplinary collaboration and convergence of idea the new culture for those committed to research and discovery. In that regard, appointment and promotion standard must recognize the team contribution of faculty. Physical space must accommodate collaborative team-based science and our administrative and organizational structures and departmentally based revenue incentives should be designed to facilitate and incentivize interdisciplinary collaboration. Second, we have to get our fair share of the NIH funding that is available. To do so, to do so we must align our research enterprise with our overall strategy and build on our strength in neuroscience, muscular, skeletal biology, heart and lung biology, cancer, diabetes, obesity, and metabolism, infection, inflammation, and immunity, developmental biology, and genetics. 
And third, we have to take advantage of opportunity in clinical, translational, and health services research while continuing to invest in basic science research. And finally, UI Healthcare is absolutely committed to help faculty compete aggressively for funding and to stimulate the recruitment of the best scientists to come to Iowa and join our team, our department. In addition to what the college is already invested in research, in addition to the 70 million the college put in the research enterprise every year, and in the spirit of One Vision, One Future, starting tomorrow, July 1st, UI Healthcare plan to invest 20 million per year in their research enterprise for the next five years for a total of $100 million. I think you heard it right. We will make $100 million investment over the next five years for research. <laughs> These funds will be used specifically to increase our NIH funding to recruit new faculty who preferably already have NIH funding, every department, center, and institute will be able to compete for these dollars by recruiting the best scientists. Combined recruitment of scientists by center and institute in collaboration with department will be encouraged. And the recruitment of faculty with dual appointment in the Carver College of Medicine as the primary appointment coupled with another college may also be considered. Special consideration will be given to the recruitment of faculty in new area and emerging field of investigation, as well as to the recruitment of faculty in the major interdisciplinary program of research in the college. And the general package for a new faculty could be in the range of two to four million over the five year period. And special consideration will be given to investigators who are bringing an entire team of scientists. However, we will try to leverage these dollars as much as possible by matching these dollars with other sources of funding, such as endowment when possible, and by asking the department to contribute, to contribute when feasible. Carver College of Medicine present faculty involved in leading edge, high risk, high reward research who receive nearly fundable score from study section and who may need additional resources to bring the program to fundable and high score will be considered. Small group of faculty from both basic and clinical department will make recommendation for funding to the dean and the VPMA. And this initiative should also free up, I believe, College of Medicine Fund to support additional startup fund for young faculty and bridging fund. Our goal is then to build on our strong historic foundation of excellence by investing in growth and development, effectively establishing the next generation of world-class researcher here within UI Healthcare, leading the way to groundbreaking discovery in the years to come. Now let's talk about education. In addition to increasing our emphasis on research, we must continue to pursue innovation in education and continue to build on our strength. Over the past decade, the college has continued to forge a path of innovation and excellence through its education, education initiative, which has continued under Dean Deborah Schwinn. These include, but by no means are limited, to the development and implementation of the new Horizon curriculum that improved the integration of basic science with clinical application and experience while increasing the student ability to individually tailor their education experience. Then the launch a few years ago of the successful Future in Biomedicine program, a program, this program developed research and learning partnership with professors from Iowa College that do not offer doctoral program. It's also open University of Iowa laboratory to Iowa College professors and their undergraduate to conduct funded research projects in the College of Medicine faculty member lab. The College of Medicine Rural Iowa Scholar Program designed to address the increasing physician shortage in rural area of our state, a growing area of distinction uh, track from global health 
to service, to humanity, to research, to teaching, a master in medical education degree focusing on the development of community of academic faculty with formal training in medical education, and of course, our numerous residency and fellowship training program that provide the rich opportunity to combine clinical and research expertise. There is certainly much to be proud of when it comes to the educational opportunity we provide. But as the healthcare landscape change, as we experience cost pressure and shortage of healthcare provider in many areas of our state, and as we have stronger incentive to make better use of our existing workforce, we have the opportunity to change our approach in the way we prepare the next generation of healthcare professional. First, we can build on the interdisciplinary education model. Our approach to medical education must, must provide the right number, mix, and distribution of physicians to meet our population need. For one thing, we must continue advancing the curriculum change process and help embed the concept team or collaborative practice. And with increasing clinical and scientific complexity, no physician can know, can know everything even in his or own specialty. The solution is to embrace fully the interdisciplinary professional education opportunity that we have. And to achieve this goal, Leadership from the top is essential, a major commitment by all the deans to enter professional education is required, and I believe that we have this. And also, the interprofessional educational activities need to be aligned with real life situation and challenges if the experience is to be tangible and applicable to real work, to real world. This is a process that needs to be accelerated, that will require real resources and strong and consistent commitment of our health science college of leadership. Second, we must address the cost of medical education. The average medical student graduate with more than $160,000 in student debt and moving from the role of student to that of actively practicing clinician currently take a minimum of 11 years. Four years of college, four years of medical schools, plus at the minimum, three years of residency training. And for some specialty, the road to practice can even be even longer from 15 to 20 years. This means that most young adults entering medicine are not practicing until the age of 30, if not often 35 years old. Then we must challenge ourselves to determine how to shrink this long lead time from education to active practice and at the same time maintain the quality of medical education while reducing the cost of medical education. Yes, reduction of medical student debt through scholarship is one option. I think we talk about this for quite a bit. However, if we were to reduce the debt of every one of our students by, say, $40,000, then they will have $120,000 rather $160,000 of debt at the end. This will require an, un an un endowment of at least 150 million. We can do that, but increasing the number of scholarship is important. However, it will be very difficult to do that, especially as a short-term solution. Then can we change the model and impact the costs? For years, the model has been to train omnicompetent physicians capable of managing all illnesses while at the same time broadening their training to include mandatory research and teaching experience for all. And can we imagine other alternatives? For example, nothing new here, but can we offer a combined bachelor and MD degree in six or seven years? The, emergen the emergence of combined baccalaureate MD degree program occurred during the 60s and early 70s, and there are still multiple eight years BA MD or BS MD program throughout the country. But there are also medical school not successfully operating six or seven year medical program in which pre-medical training is reduced from the typical four years of college to two or three years. Interestingly, there appear to be no difference 
in attrition between combined degree and traditional student during the medical school's phase of their education. All measure of performance also indicate that student in combined degree program achieve a level of competency comparable to, if not better than their traditional peer. <coughs> Students who want to have four years of college before going to medical school should have a choice, but medical school should not make it an, ent an entrance requirement. More than 83% of matriculating medical students report having decided they want to study medicine by their junior year of college. Now, if we look at the medical school itself, the four year of medical school, medical school are four years in land because it was a recommendation made by Flexner over 100 years ago in 1910. 100 years later, we still have two years of preclinical pre science and two years of clinical training. And the only change has been that a good part of the fourth year is now used for traveling to apply for residency program. <laughs> Can we do better or at least offer to our students some choice? Some study have suggested that in fact, the average duration of medical training could be safely reduced without a negative impact on educational outcome, such as by eliminating half a year each of preclinical and clinical training. One and a half years of clinical training will still give students sufficient exposure to range of specialty and prepare them for residency. So far, fewer than a dozen of the nation, 124 medical schools, are offering or actively considering three years program, which typically involve the elimination of some elective, attendance of summer class, and the provisional guarantee of residency. Now, can we imagine moving from a time-based curriculum to a competency-based curriculum with more flexible, individualized learning plan? There is no question that shortening the duration of medical school would positively impact physician shortage concern and medical school and deafness without any negative impact on patient outcome or patient safety. Now, reducing the duration of medical school not only will reduce student debt by decreasing the number of years that tuition it pays, it may also result in an additional year of earning for these people by enabling them to enter the healthcare workforce earlier. I believe we should seriously consider these fast track alternative, and I'm eager to work with the leadership of the college to explore this possibility in the future. And third, this is a lot more difficult, however, I believe we need to rethink how residency and fellowship are structured. Presently, many fellowship programs in medicine and pediatrics are three or four years program. The last two years being dedicated for mentor research with reduced time, reduced clinic time. One or two years of required research is, has been relevant and might be relevant for all trainees if they want to become academic physician, but this is not always the case. And trainees should have the choice to extend their training if they choose. But why impose extended training on everyone? If trainees are interested in research, imagine giving them a junior faculty position in lieu of pro uh, prolonging their residency. And finally, with so many more intelligent technology at our disposal, Today, we are better positioned than ever before to design and accelerate medical education program as an option with flexible learning platform that will enable virtual education and greater experiential learning at even earlier stage in the curriculum. Now, let's imagine how we can apply technology and the experience of other leading academic medical center to create genuine innovation in medical education. In conclusion, the transformation of our healthcare enterprise will not happen overnight. It will be achieved through imagination, curiosity, hard work, and dedication, as well as optimism that the future will hold many opportunity that we will be positioned to capture. And really, in the word of Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon.com, who has changed how people shop for everything from books to grocery, and has influenced millions worldwide, if you think of opportunity in terms of the gold rush, then you're pretty depressed right now, 
because the last nugget of gold will be gone. But the good thing is, with innovation, there is not the last nugget. Every new thing creates two new questions and two new opportunities. And with this, I'll thank you for your attention. Thank you.